The Three Stooges, You Nazi Spy, which was the first anti-Nazi comedy film, comes out as food rationing in the UK begins and would remain in effect until 1954. The year is 1940, and this Dodge Luxury Liner D14 could be had at your local Dodge dealer. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that features the different and unique cars that never got the time of day. We do four to five episodes a week with engine episodes on Wednesdays or Thursdays. If that sounds of interest, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. 1940 Dodge model lineup. Dodge was offered in three wheelbase configurations. The 6 Series D16 with a wheelbase of 117 inches. The Lux 6 D15 wheelbase of 119 inches. The Luxury Liner D14, which was offered in special and deluxe trims, riding a wheelbase of 119 and a half inches. The Luxury Liner could be had as a business coupe. Coupe, two-door sedan, four-door sedan, limo, convertible coupe, and chassis. Dodge would offer the Luxury Liner from 1939 through 1941, and then it would morph into the Dodge Custom. Dodge's passenger cars were labeled Luxury Liners, offered wider seats and finer upholstery materials. Cool exclusive feature for 1940 was the safety signal speedometer. From 0 to 30 miles an hour, it would glow green, amber from 30 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour. Anything over 50 would be bright red. Sealed headlights for the very first time on Dodge in 1940. Floating power was just marketing jargon for rubber motor mounts instead of the engine being mounted directly to the chassis. Let's talk specs. 203 inches long. It rides a wheelbase of 119.5 inches. It weighs 3,190 pounds. Price $1,030, which is equivalent to you spending $22,690.68 in the year 2024. Total 1940 Dodge production was 189,643 units. Total D14 convertibles was 2,100 Units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer. 217.8 cubic inch displacement, flathead in line 6, 3.6 liters. It's good for 87 horsepower, 3600 RPM, 166 pound feet, or 225 newton meters at 1200 RPM with a bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 4.4 inches. Compression is 6.5 to 1 with four main bearings. 1940 did see a redesign, so let's compare 1939 on top, 40 on the bottom, starting in the front. Just about everything is different, so let's talk about similarities first. Both have split windshields, wing windows, hoods open the same. Both have that Ram mascot. Bumpers are very similar, yet different. Overriders are also different, with different accenting pinstripes and shapes. Headlights go from rectangular to round on the 40. The front fascia on these two are totally different. The fenders are rounder on the 39. Moving to the side profile, better look at the fender situation, which you can see that both front and rear fenders are revised. Wheels have also been revised. The 40 ditches the running boards. Hood louvers are different between these two. Notice that the 39 doesn't go the whole way down the hood like the 40s does. Gas filler is a gas cap found on the same side. Moving to the rear, the 39 has a rumble seat, whereas the 40 doesn't. But with that said, the 40 has a trunk that the 39 doesn't really have. Both rear profiles are totally different shapes. Tail lights are different shapes as well as in different locations. Moving inside to take a gander at the dash, which both are very similar. Which one do you like better? If you're in the market for a 1940 Dodge D14 convertible, this one is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over a thousand cars for sale when recording this episode. And get this, anybody can go there and peruse their inventory in person, and I would tell you from experience that it's definitely worth it. You'll spend the whole day there, and it's like going to car heaven. I swear, when you go through the front doors, you can hear angels sing, ah, 
For more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to this very car, be sure to click the link below after the show. Let's talk styling. Just look at these bezels. They have these like marker lights in the top. Also these three red pinstripe lines inside. Bumpers with bumper guards slash bumper overriders or bumperettes. Notice the pinstriping in those. Also see how the bumpers attach to the car. Beautiful Dodge badge there on the nose. Just look at the bright work leading up to it. This car has a two-piece windshield. Center line coming down to the ram. So take a gander at these. The fenders are just rolled. Look at this fender design. Antenna is on the driver's side. Driver's side also has this spotlight that also doubles as a mirror. This car being it's a convertible, doesn't have drip rails. Has wing windows. Look at the very petite running boards. Has this texturing effect on the rear fenders to match the front fenders. Gas filler is on the driver's side. It's, it's funny that there's an apron in the back, but there isn't one in the front. Back bumpers mimic the front bumpers. So notice this textured effect on the apron. trunk's heavy. Trunk lid is pretty heavy. Look at how massive this trunk is. The load floor is really low. The rear window in the back is small, but it's real glass. Getting inside, but before we do, look at all of the different lines in that door handle design. Store has a very solid feel to it. The interior looks like it's been redone. The door panel has a nice plushy feel to it with carpet at the bottom. Armrest as well as door handle to pull the door shut. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window which operates like this. And notice when it's all the way up in the upright position it takes up the space for the wing window. Coming down inside the pedal box. Hand brake, clutch, brake, gas pedal, high beam switch. High beam switch is right there. Just take a look at this interior. There is some sort of makeshift jump seat back there. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here is what first person over the hood would look like. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Headlights, hand throttle, amp meter, coolant temperature, speedometer with odometer, gasoline gauge, oil pressure, key, the starter is on the floor, vertical radio, ashtray and lighter and this one works opposite in which you would think it would work power top 
windshield wipers. I'm not sure what this is. It might be a compass or it might be something else. Up above, there are sun visors and they are on the slender side. There's that one and there's one over here for the passenger. Rear view mirror in the center, which the sun visors don't have any interference over. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. I think it's locked. Getting under the hood. I'm gonna open the other side so we have light. See how that hooks over there? Has this arm come up and it hooks onto that. Two massive trumpet horns, six volt battery right here. And that flathead six sits way down inside. Got a generator down there. Outside the box, oil filtration. This side we have an oil bath air cleaner, downdraft carburetor, exhaust, intake and exhaust is on one side, coil is mounted right there in the firewall. Just look at where the radiator sits. Changing that would be a chore, you'd have to take the whole hood off. On the positive side, built solid. Personally, I love the way that the hood opens and it latches very nicely. Full instrumentation, reliable engine against it. No V8 option available and the Flathead 6 isn't a powerhouse of an engine. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1940 Ford Deluxe or 1940 Dodge D14 or 1940 Chevrolet. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. On to the second scenario, a bit outside the box. 1940 Willis or 1940 Dodge D14 or 1940 Studebaker Champion. Once again, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. I call it the After Party. It gives you the opportunity to share your ride, stories, experiences. Anything that you'd like to share that's car related is definitely shareable on there. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. And until next time, take a look!